do you really need all of that? And the answer I think is no. You can totally start out on just your basic beginner unicycle. Hi, and welcome to Unicycle Basics. My name is Finn, and today we are going to talk about equipment. This is a slightly different video than normal, because I actually don't even have to leave the backyard. I'll just be sitting here and showing you all the items I bring on a normal ride. So first off, helmet. I think this is probably the most important piece of equipment, even more important than the unicycle itself. When you are riding a unicycle, you are going to fall. Just a highly unstable vehicle, and at some point you are going to hit the ground. And if your head hits the ground, it's better to have some protection. I like to use mountain bike helmets. They offer quite good ventilation, so your head doesn't get too hot. But they also offer um, good protection for the back of your head. Going on with protective equipment. Gloves. Um, yeah, protecting your palms if you hit the ground. I just use mountain bike gloves. Some people like to use uh, gloves that have a bit of wrist support. Uh, wrist support. Um, I personally don't really need that. Then the third safety item I bring on every ride is knee pads. Um, protecting the skin on your knees can be really helpful and even just protecting the joint itself. Your knees might hit the ground. They do quite often if you're taking a really bad fall. Um, in general in this video I'm not going to recommend any specific product. I just show you what I use because that's what I have here. But if you choose other brands, that's fine. One note on knee pads, however, is that I would recommend buying from a mountain bike brand or a brand that focuses on protective equipment, not a unicycle brand that also makes some pads. A lot of riders also like shin protection. I personally don't feel like I need that because I don't hit my shins that often. If you do want to run shin protection, there's also knee and shin combo pads that work really well. So with the protective equipment out of the way, now it's onto the unicycle itself. And this is my unicycle. Um, the first question usually people have when they're buying a mountain unicycle so which wheel size to get. There's three main choices if you're average sized. There's 24 inch if you're really short, then I'd recommend getting a 24 inch. But if you're, let's say between one meter 60 and upwards, there's three short choices. 26 inch, which I would only recommend if you're planning on getting a really big tire, then there is plenty of tire choice there. But for more normal sized tires, the mountain bike market just has moved away from 26 inch. So if you're buying new and you want to run a 2.5 inch tire to a 3 inch tire, I would recommend going 27.5 inch or 29 inch. To differentiate between those two sizes, bigger wheel means going faster. Um, so if you're going to do more cross country style riding, going farther and not really caring about what the hardest trail is you can hit, then I'd recommend 29 inch. On the flip side, if going the, down the hardest trail possible is your goal, 27.5 inch would be my choice. Of course, it's only an inch or one and a half inches of difference. So it's not going to change the whole world. You can still ride a long ride on a 27.5 or you can still go down a really steep and really rough terrain on a 29 inch. The other thing to talk about with tires is tire width. Most riders fall in a range of 2.4 inch to 3.25 inch. In general, wider tire 
you can run lower pressure and the tire is going to absorb more bumps. But on the flip side, it is going to feel more spongy and you don't have that direct feel on the ground if you're turning a corner. Um, it doesn't feel as direct if you're landing after a drop. The tire needs some time to settle after the drop. So if you go really wide, if you go like a 5 inch wide tire, then it becomes a lot about controlling the tire itself, not dealing with the terrain. On the flip side, small tire, more direct, but you have to deal with every bump individually. And as I said, 26 inch, if you want really wide tires, especially like the 5 inch wide tires, you're going to find those in 26 inch. 27.5 inch for medium sized tires, so 3.25 to 2.4 inches wide. On the unicycle itself is crank size. Um, most unicycles come with 150 millimeters to 140 millimeters cranks as standard nowadays. I feel like that's a good size to start out with. And then as you progress and your riding gets better and better, you can move on to shorter and shorter cranks. With shorter cranks, it's easier to go fast, but you give up some control. For that, braking really helps. Once you're better on with using the brake, you don't need quite as much control with your feet and you can use uh, shorter and shorter cranks. Also, if you're really focused on cross-country riding and riding far, then shorter cranks are a better option. There's also multi-hold cranks that have two or three holds in different crank length. So you can just change the pedal over and not have to change the whole crank. I personally don't use them because I'm too lazy to switch crank size anyway. I just run 125 and I'm happy with that. Also important on a unicycle, I think, is the brake. If you're just a beginner and starting out with your first off-road rides, you don't really need a brake. So if you're just getting your very first unicycle, if it doesn't come with a brake installed already, it's not a problem. Braking is a whole separate skill that you need to put in some time to practice. But um, I think it's important if you're getting a new mountain unicycle currently, get one that has the mount for a brake already. So that once you progress and you feel like you might need to add a brake, you can add it without changing over the whole unicycle. Then, next on the list, I pretty much always wear some bike shorts. These are padded. I don't really feel like I need the padding, but having one layer that sits tight against my skin and one loose layer, like my normal riding short over it, that really helps me to prevent chafing on my legs. Also, shoes. Um, you should be wearing closed shoes just to protect your foot, not sandals. I like these mountain bike specific shoes that have a flat sole where the pedal sits really nicely. But a lot of people also use hiking boots and that works well too. Um, one important thing I think is that they shouldn't be too lightly constructed because the cranks and the pedals rub through a lot of shoes very quickly. Then I also have my backpack with some stuff with me on most of my rides. In that backpack there's a first aid kit, a small one. I hope I never need it, but for the one or two times I needed it, it was really good to have it there. Um, also, there's some water in my drinking bladder there. Um, some food. If your food is wrapped in plastic like this is, make sure you bring all the plastic out of the forest again. And if you find some along the way, maybe pick that up. That's always a nice thing to do. I bring some spare tools, just a set of Allen wrenches and some patches. A small pump. 
And on longer rides, I bring a spare tube. If I'm just out in the local hills and not far away from the town, I can manage hiking back if my tube explodes. But if you're out in the Alps and far away from the next city, it's a really good idea to bring a spare tube so that you can fix almost every f flat you may get. And that is actually almost everything I bring. I bring my glasses. If you are short-sighted like me, um, it's really good to see what's on the trail before you hit it. So I recommend if you need them, bring your glasses or contact lenses. If I'm out on a downhill ride that is really focused just on the downhill, I have a full face helmet and I have elbow protection, I have um, shoulder protection, I have back protection. But I really only add that in if I feel like I need it. So I showed you a bunch of stuff. The question is, do you really need all of that? And the answer I think is no. If you're just a beginner, you can totally start out on just your basic beginner unicycle. Get a helmet, borrow some knee pads, borrow some gloves from someone. Um, ride your first trails, go out, have fun. Don't let your lack of equipment hold you back. It's really not that you need all of it. But I think a lot of people overspend on their unicycle and forget all the little stuff around it that actually makes quite a lot of difference in riding. Most unicycles, after you reach a certain price, they only get lighter and slightly stiffer, which of course, that's nice. But having a backpack that doesn't wobble around on your shoulders or having some shoes that really work nicely with your pedals, I think that actually makes a lot more of a difference than saving 600 grams on a unicycle. A commonly asked question is, where do you buy your unicycles? And there's two stores I'd like to show you in no particular order. The first one is metfor1.com. They are in Italy, but ship internationally. And there's unicycle.com. They have a bunch of local branches, so you can pick the one closest to you. For me, that happens to be the German side. Both unicycle.com and met one will provide high quality service and sell you high quality unicycles. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you out on the trails in the next video. Unicycle Basics is a passion project for me. I'm doing to try and grow this awesome sport. So if you want to help out, the most important thing you can do is sharing these videos with anyone you think is interested in mountain unicycling. Also, like and subscribe on YouTube so the YouTube algorithm will feed this to as many people as possible. If you want to help out with money, and pay for some of the snacks I consumed when making these videos and some of the equipment I got, there will be a link in the description.